Hey everybody, welcome to Deborah Cobalt Live. Anybody out there, thanks for the music, love that. <laughs> we should just play it under the entire show, It'll sort of get us moving a little bit. But um, thanks for tuning in, and for anybody, anybody who's wanted to lose weight and who can't, I've got an inspiring show for you, because the two ladies and the doctor in studio today are testimony that Anybody can do it if you guys can do it. And I'm having you people on to inspire all the people out there who say, I can't do it, I can't do it. You can. So uh, let me introduce my panel here. We have Jill Ekman, who happens to be a friend of mine. Jill? There's, oh, there's that big studio audience. There's so many people cheering you on in here. Okay? Oh, my gosh. They're all out there. They're like, oh. Jill Ekman, um, you are a recruiter. And the name of your company is JE Strategies. And you've lost... With Doctor, um, we'll introduce you in a second. You've lost over 100 pounds, about 110 pounds, which to me is so shocking. Do we have do we have her before and after shot real quick? Oh, my gosh. You don't even look like you had to lose 110 pounds. I mean, I could see you might have a little extra on you there, but wow, 110 pounds. That's what everybody said. It's true, right? You, you carried it well, oh, as they like to you. say, right? You carried your weight. But because you lost so much weight with uh, Dr. Christian Middleton, you decided to also now work with him. So you've become a bit of a business partner with, with the doctor. Yes. Uh, so let me introduce uh, Dr. Christian uh, Middleton next. So thank you for being here. Um, you started out your career. Um, you were a model. Right. Um, well, yeah, yeah, why not? We'll I mean, there. why not? Let's go there. Let's go back a little bit. Okay. But also, uh, you were in the special forces in Norway. Isn't that correct? Yeah. And when you were doing that, you said to yourself, there's a real correlation here between the way people eat and between the way um, these guys are, and girls are able to fight and do what they do. And you've become interested. You were interested in, in health and what you put in your body since you were a really little kid, even before that, when you were like 11 years old as an athlete in school, right? Probably. Carried that with you. Um, special forces, you're a model, you were a model, you went to school, you were a chiropractor. Um, and now here you are in Los Angeles, um, helping people like Jill and others lose a lot of weight. And we're going to get into how you get into someone's mind. Right. How do you get into a person's mind to do that? Because I'd like to take off about 10 or 20 pounds. <laughs> I have every excuse in the book. It's like, well, I can't do this. Um, but there's something that you do to get people to respond this way. Yeah. Uh, so we'll get to that in a minute. And third, we have Gunit Monga. Thank you for being here. And thank you for coming all the way from India just for my show. I want you to know that. <laughs> she did. She flew all the way here. We flew her in here, right? We That's flew her in true. here into Hollywood. That's true. Uh, you're a filmmaker. You've done 23 films over the past four years, among them Lunchbox and the Monsoon Shootout. Um, India Today magazine called you the 50, 50, in one of the 50 top Indians changing life in India today, which is incredible. Nine of your films were showcased in Cannes and 14 of them at the Toronto Film Festival. So congratulations. Thank you. And you lost 50 pounds. See, there's that audience again. You lost 50 pounds, right, under, uh, under Dr. M. We call you Dr. M's okay. program. Let's get to this a little bit of what do you do to get into somebody's head? To do this because you know if I go to one more person when they say look open up a can of tuna put it on your plate you're gonna have just tuna with nothing <laughs> in it it's like oh my god I think I'd rather die you know that makes me want to go to an in and out burger line I just right. want you to know that yeah, know. Um, so what do you do to change your thinking um, that's the tough part well a lot of people come to me because ultimately they are either wanting to lose weight for health reason or for vanity and they are fearful one and the same right yeah. I mean or, or both. So, and most are fearful of low calories or not eating enough. And so one of the first things I do is to help people um, get rid of a fair amount of misconceptions that are out there, that it's um, dangerous to go without food for too long. That That's um, not my problem. Keep continuing. Okay. <laughs> um, that, you know, hunger is a sign or a symptom that you need to eat. Otherwise, um, there's a problem. Or it's really more like an urge indicating you that, okay, you're running low on energy. But if you have one of these on you, you have 3,500 calories of energy okay. right there. That's one pound. Right. One pound looks like that, ladies and gentlemen. That surprised me. That looked more like five pounds. But that's one pound. That's one. Lift up 10 or 20 for me, would you? All right. So here is five. That's it? 
Oh, there's ten. So disgusting. I wanted to. Can I take one of those home? I'm just going to leave it on my it kitchen a, counter. It's a good reminder. No, it is. That thing is perfect. I want to order those and just leave them around my house. Because anytime I'm tempted, I'm just going to look at that and go, ugh, it's on my stomach. Forget about it. Yeah. So what's that? You've got that's a baby just, you're holding. Yeah, that's, a, that's my yellow babies. That's 20 pounds. So it's oof. quite a bit. When people just talk numbers, 20 pounds, I want to lose 20 pounds. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal. But but it's all that. And then throw that one on top of it. There's yeah, your 21. There's the 21. The that's little head the there. There you top. go. Oh, it's it's actually... If I may say, it's kind of disgusting. It just looks ugly, and it looks unhealthy, and it looks like, why would you want that jelly in your body? No wonder why it jiggles, right? right? I mean, take right. a look at it. Um, so what you do is what? I mean, how do you – did you just present that when somebody comes to see you and says, is this what you want to carry you around? get rid of it. No, I'm, I, I, I talk about just like what I started saying is that this is actually not disgusting. We were meant – to have some of this. But when it's too much. Yeah, when it's too much, it's too much. That's what I but mean. But the point is, it's it's not a curse from God that we eat too much and we get this. It's actually fuel storage to be used for times that there's no fuel around. The problem today is there's always fuel around too much. And processed fuel, too. And processed fuel. I have fuel, a real is, issue with that. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's one of the main things. So instead of being so much in fear of... of I'm not going to have enough energy. I show them that this thing was put on your body specifically so you would have energy for leaner days. We just got to create the leaner day. So let's, you know, kind of get back to basics. It's not complicated. Um, Jill, what led you to go to the doctor? What was going on with you? I know, you know, you and I are friendly and we talked a little bit and you were saying you felt unhealthy. And frankly, you'd wake up in the morning thinking, am I, you'd go to bed at night thinking, am I even going to be here in the morning? I mean, it actually got to that point. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I knew, um, I had a friend years prior who had gone to Dr. M and he had been very successful on the diet. And then actually my sister was on the diet and, um, the one I know, yeah, that little cutie, Yes, she's a doll. I know her whole family and your mom love her. <laughs> so, okay. So continue. Hi mom. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I knew that it worked. I just wasn't sure I could be so strict. Hey, look, when you first told me you were doing this and you were a little bit larger, still adorable, though, I will tell you, I thought, I don't know, seems kind of tough. And here you are now, 110 pounds later, and you just keep going. I've been in events with you. <laughs> I've seen you not go for the tray of junk, right? You know what I'm talking about? We were at a film screening, and I'm just going for it. Yes. And Jill's just stopping and sitting back and watching everyone else go for the stuff that they probably shouldn't have. You have incredible discipline. What did this man I do ate, to you? I ate, though. I ate that but night. But you ate well. I was, I was I actually did. watching you. I did. You're inspiring, and I'm telling you, you're, you, this is going to be a revolution because you inspire people. Thank um, you. But what did he do? How did he get into your head? What did he say to you to get you to do this, other than the fact that you felt hor horribly unhealthy? Well, first of all, I, I kind of had to get my head together. At the very beginning, I was still unsure that I could actually do it so I had to sort of talk myself into it and I, I knew um, just a year ago that I needed to really be serious about it 100%. What did you feel like when you were going to bed? Were you scared? Were you saying this, yes, this is horrible? I was scared and I wasn't feeling well you know and so I knew I kind of knew I had to do something and Did you talk to anyone like your husband or you said your sister was on it earlier? I mean did you say Somebody help me. I need support. Or did you just pick up the phone and call and say, I, I need a little help I here? I just kind of did it. But, I mean, you know, I mean, everybody knew that it was, it was like, on my mind. But, it, like, the but day I took tipping? action, I just, you, you know. did it. Yeah, it was just like I, it was just when you get to your breaking point, you know. Yeah, I just want you to describe that for people. Because people want to, you know, some people are listening and they're thinking or watching and they're thinking, I don't know, but what did it for you? What was the day? What did it? Well, the day was after I had seen the results. My my sister had been on the program for about four weeks, and she had already dropped probably 20 pounds, I would oh. say. And um, she looked amazing. And also my nephew went on the program as well, and they both – I mean, I could see it, and I thought if they could do it, I could do it. And a little bit of sister sister rivalry there going on, I think. Well, right? no, it was just like just made kidding. it doable. It made it doable. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, I'm just kidding. And um, 
look, you know, we can all come up with excuses. And I think that I, I just had maybe given myself one too many excuses for too long. And I was just kind of ready. And then I went, I made it, I made an <coughs> appointment to see Dr. M and signed up for the program, but then got home and said, Oh my God, I'm supposed to do this. And another two days I don't think I'm mentally ready what I got to get my head together you know but ultimately I was able see to. knowing you were going it was just giving you anxiety and you had to sort of get into it yes and, um, because I didn't want to do it unless I was going to do it wholeheartedly now what amazes me about you uh Gunit, is you did this you did this program and you were over in India so how did you hear about it? And you know, and why this program? How is this thing different than anything else that people are doing? There's all kinds of things. Nutrisystem, Weight Watchers. Um, <clears throat> and there's nothing that I've not done. And there's nothing that you haven't so, done. So how does this work I for was, you? Um, I was 175 pounds. And, and you're a little, you're, you're shorter. Yeah, so I'm you know, that, that's a lot. I mean, you're five <laughs> feet nothing. Yeah. You're adorable, is what you are. But uh, yeah, I get it. So 175 on a strapping, you know, five foot ten athlete isn't that bad. But you're five foot nothing, and that that's a lot. Yeah, for so, a little little frame like yours, yeah. So I was just working, making movies, and putting on weight, and less than I mean, in no time I realized I was pre-diabetic. Mm. I had PCOD, I um, and just you know, for every time, for everything, you have to be on you have to be on medicines per month, and it was ridiculous. And I have tried all kinds of weight loss programs and gone to retreats, gone to resorts, locked myself for four weeks in a resort, tried to lose weight, understand low carbs. But what is very interesting about Dr. Middleton is that he really breaks it down and makes you understand food and the relationship of your body and food. Well, there's a scientific, I mean, it's all scientific, what you put in and how it relates to the cells in the body. And we're going to get to that with you in a little bit. I just want to hear the story from the ladies so here. So we met uh, because of a common friend at an airport. And I think <laughs> I wanted to lose weight and I would just talk about it like nonstop. And uh, our common friend told me that um, um, he works with weight loss. And I was like, yeah, I want to lose weight. It was that casual. And so you called him up from the airport or <coughs> India or no, whatever? No, I went back to India and I came back. I come here very often for work. I came back and I did a meeting to understand what this was. It blew my mind on just fundamentals. Because what happens is when you go to several nutritionists, they just write a diet for you. And you have this every two hours or you have this every three hours. And it's a very mindless way of looking at food. And then you were like, why am I eating this right now? Okay, I just have to. So that's been a process of maybe 30 years of my life and trying. I've always been big even in school. Mm. So just to understand that this is what you need to do. So I think I went from, I, I basically with Dr. Middleton, it was about understanding fundamentals. It was about understanding what we are putting in groups, like this is protein, this is carb, this is how many calories, this is what you do. It was more about understanding the basics than just saying what okay, kind of basics are you talking eat about? Because two Jill, grams of this or eat five grams of this. It Jill and I were talking last night about sugar. Like to be yeah. really specific. Like what's going in our bodies, doctor? That that just shouldn't be going in there. Now sugar is a natural substance, so you have to sort of break that down for me and the people listening. So is cocaine in its original source. Mm. So processed sugar. Right? Process. It's always the process. It's the process. Which that is, is most a of bad we, word. Process. So, pra yeah. You know, anytime you take anything from nature and you start altering, the more you alter it, the worse it is for you. So. But you brought up a good one because I think everyone knows sugar is bad for you. But they don't necessarily know exactly how and why and how it works. So what Gunit was talking about, I focus on simplifying science because if it's too much science, it's kind of like, okay, you know, I'm done, right? You, you, you want to understand it in basic terms. So I try to simplify it. And when it comes to sugar, that's an off button for weight loss. And that's, you mentioned all these other diets. Yes, they all have their names and there is a branding involved because it's a big market. But, you know, your body works one way. It doesn't work different if you're on South Beats, Atkins, Jenny Craig's, Lindor. You know, it's, so I try to teach the basic concept of how the body works. You can call it whatever you want, but this is how it works. And it actually works in your favor in a natural environment. So I try to give the average patient an idea that there's nothing wrong with you. You're not weak. Actually, you're craving your need for, for calorie-dense food because it makes you feel good. It's a great survival instinct. It's the atmosphere. So that's the first uh, sort of misconception that our atmosphere is normal. You have to look at your, this atmosphere with different eyes. And, and if you're going to be healthy, yes, you do have to be aware. You can't just live on autopilot. Um, processed. I have a real issue with processed. I right. mean, 
for centuries, we've all been eating off the land, you know, whether it's animals, vegetables, whatever. But the past hundred years, let's say, things, a lot of our food's been coming out of a factory and yeah. stamped and processed. And you look at the, you know, what's in it on a box, which, ugh, that kind of makes me a little sick. But isn't that a lot of our problem? That's why we've got people with diabetes or pre-diabetic, yeah. because it's not food in its natural form. Even as you said, the sugar's processed sugar. Um, isn't that probably the worst culprit, everything that's been processed? It, it, and, and if I just may say, a lot of those programs that I mentioned also, you know, they have like pre-prepared foods. Oh, my gosh. They come to the door. And again, they have a whole big list of stuff that's in them. That's just going to keep you addicted. Right. Right. So one of the things, yeah, simplify it because you can do this the simple, cheap way. Or you can do it the fancy restaurant way. As long as you understand the basic food groups that you need or that will benefit you in, in this journey. And. Yeah, the, the, the processing, the, the, issue, ma the main reason for processing is, is you know, financial, is to make you be able to make more product quicker, to be able to store it, to preserve it. And get it to the masses. And also to get people to eat more of it, and that's the key here. We are hardwired to crave calorie-dense food because it gives us good feelings. There is a the dopamine, right? dopamine yeah. release, right? So because in nature there isn't much. So you want to search it out. It makes you survive longer if you find it because you need the calories. In our environment, smart scientists have figured out, oh, it makes you feel good. Let's hyper-concentrate it in all the foods. People will eat more of it, and we generate a low-grade addiction that's basically now international practically. And that's the issue. Many not every, but many live with a low to high grade addiction to food. So that's how it has to be treated. I do. And that's part of the approach. It's not a weakness, it's an addiction. And that addiction actually doesn't come from someone having a, an extreme weakness towards drug addiction. It's actually an addiction that would have made you a great survivor in a natural environment. What are some foods that are off the list? Stay away, stay clear. Like if you do anything, please just let's do these three things. What would that be? A little takeaway for people. Um, Go ahead. No dairy because it has sugar in it. Really? Mm -hmm. No lactate either. I <laughs> know that's dairy. Well, lactose is sugar. I know, I know. So it depends. I mean, if you have uh, organic cheese, it also depends what you talk about for weight loss or to maintain two different things. Weight loss. Let's go weight loss right now. So no dairy. You know what? I've changed that. I'm now doing almond milk. Is that okay? Are you, what are your In thoughts right on that? quantity. It? And I know because it's sweet. See, that's another thing. Almond milk is so sweet. Oh. I'll have a little bit. It's like, oh. You can get unsweetened. But that's not okay on the reboot diet. No, no. I mean, if you're on this specific diet, there are different <laughs> things. If you're giving him in general how to... How to what you want to trim away to prevent gaining weight or stay relatively healthy. Yes, you want to avoid things that are high in any sugar, like lactose. You could eat some cheese. You could have some cheese if you know it's clean, not processed and organic. I'm thinking cereal because I love cereal. Maybe I shouldn't have cereal. Either. Cereal shouldn't. That's 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 <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's processed sugar with added sugar. I'm gonna if, if I come to see you and I'm gonna give you the little things that I All just right. love to have my cheat foods like. Yeah. You know, I'll go to Whole Foods and buy their little form of Cheerios, and then I'll put my almond milk in it, and I'm probably all wrong, right? Deborah, no Cheerios, no almond milk. So then what do I do? I'll be all angry. No, you angry first have to understand food groups mm. and uh, clear <laughs> fundamentals, and then you will look at food differently. So right now you eat mindlessly. When you do something mindfully, <laughs> Thank you. things change. Great <laughs> job telling it like it is. Well, so, I, I, this is we're honest true. here at Deborah yes. Cobalt Live. You got to say it like it Absolutely. is. I eat we've, mindlessly. No kidding. No. So go ahead. <laughs> so I mean, we've done that all our lives, and and I'm I, Italian. We eat mindlessly. I promise. I mean, I mean, we're Indians, so I think Italians and Indians are very Same similar thing. with loves. With and their you're Jewish, love aren't food. you? Same thing. It's like you know, love somebody food. rings the doorbell, out comes the food. I don't even know where it's prepared. <laughs> it was just always magically there growing up, and I often wondered where it came. From, yeah. But it was always there. So part I of life. have uh, reversed my diabetes and my PCOD has um, completely been corrected. And that has not happened forever on anything. It is all about food. Well, it's about and, the chemicals. And on this diet. The good chemicals going into your body. The natural stuff is what I meant. Right? And on this diet, um, I was, I mean, we don't go, I didn't go to the gym. Lost all the weight with only food. And then you understand maintenance. You fall in love with yourself, with your body, with this newfound image of yours and then you're like okay now i want to maintain it i have been off it for more than six eight months now or maybe 10 months but it's it's not hey it, it's been amazing and i've been traveling around the world and, yeah, and you I work understand. in an industry with actresses and actors who are so beautiful and you were telling me on the phone that people are looking at you a little bit differently they're like oh there's gunit it's like uh, right a little yeah, bit yeah it is a conversation starter now for sure i mean yeah. i'm advising the whole 
world and actually in india nobody knows about this diet so it's very interesting where you know uh, i'm i've been pushing doctor on skype and and all my friends want to speak to him including a lot of actors and actresses yeah, yeah. but let's get back to cuz i want people to have a takeaway mm. give me three items stay clear from if you're just trying to lose weight let's say people can't get to you or whatever what should they do well no no milk you said no milk what firstly, no dairy firstly you don't have to starve you have to find the balanced substitutes for everything right so the biggest thing is sugar i have one don't eat processed carbs and realize processed that, food is scary but eat carbs it's so funny on this diet you're eating vegetables you're having a little bit of fruit you're having all and by the time when we're done these are all great complex carbs when when someone is done with the diet they ask me when can i start eating carbs and you're like They're you've actually, been eating them you've been eating them all along the ones you're talking about you're never meant to eat what's a processed carb see break it down people Cheerios. don't know Cheerios. Yeah, okay. So no, it also Reds. depends on your goals because when I did the diet, like I didn't even have fruit in my diet because, and that's a carb, but. Um, and all it's, fruits and, are carbs? Yeah, all fruits are carbs. All fruits are and carbs. And because it raises your insulin levels and because I don't crave, I don't, I didn't crave the, the fruits. He didn't add them into my diet it be, and also because I needed to lose so much so quickly. And I wanted to do it quickly. And you lost very quickly at first. Didn't you lose 50 pounds in, what, six weeks or yeah. something? How do you do that? I mean, people must have thought you were sick. It's like, whoa, what happened? It's you like, know, no, I just ate better. I think I think that I gain and lose weight really quickly. Mm -hmm. For some reason, my body you know, reacts really quickly one way or the other. Yeah, because so. your body knows what you should and shouldn't have. And as soon as you take it away. All right, so yes. again, no sugars. But okay. that's confusing to me. Sometimes I that don't know is. what has sugar and what doesn't. Clear, and what processed is easy. Like, no, I love something really bad. Can I confess? Yeah. Club crackers. They're awful. Those Keebler yes. club crackers are terrible. Those evil Keeblers. They're so, those <laughs> evil little Keeblers. <laughs> I eat those evil little, evil little guys. See, I, late at night when I'm cheating, I run down for a cracker or Cheerios. So, um, you know, that's, that's sort of my go. thing. What? Late at night. You're not looking for a big meal. You're looking for something to make you feel good. That's not what food's supposed I'm to be. I'm looking for some dopamine in my yes, head. Yes, you are. Yep, I'm looking yeah. for some drugs. So yeah. I'm going down late at night when nobody's listening or watching, and I'm cheating a little bit with, right. yeah. So, okay, so the and your sugar. your kitchen's not supposed to be your medicine cabinet. Yeah, it's really, it's not. And there are times to eat, like there is times when you give your body rest time so it can actually consume the food that you've eaten. So once you understand that, you will never put on weight in your life. So I'm going to come to you. People right. are going to come to you. You're going right. to pretty much take most people off of that or wean them off right, of yeah. the sugars. You're going to re you don't, you're not necessarily in favor of dairy. What else would you say? Just try to cut out if you can. Complex carbs, like you said. Um, yeah, complex carbs. Which are breads, breads, pastas. breads. You know, very simplified. If you just cut out all sugar, you're good. That'll I really have trouble knowing what is sugar and what okay, isn't. Okay, so that's I'm a good point. This is that. part of why I'm simplifying. Because if you go to market, 85% of all products have added sugar. So look at them. The ones that have it, don't have it. And that, you know, will be mixed with proteins and fats and all kinds of products. But take out all the products that has added sugar and you will be a lot healthier and you probably lose some weight even without coming to my program or anything. How is losing weight? Because we're running out of time and we've been on the air for over half an hour. How is running out of, how has doing this diet really changed your life completely? I mean, look at you, 110 pounds less. It's unbelievable. I, I just fly through my day. I have like. Bound, I'm bounds of energy. And you're energy. always happy. I see you yes, I am. all over the place and you're smiling. And you, you're in the film industry yes. and you're just, you're, you're glowing. I mean, Absolutely. you're showing up and you probably have a lot more energy to sell whatever film that you're doing no, and talk about it's, it. It's an uh, immense amount of, it's abundance of confidence and self-worthness and it's amazing. I mean, it's comfortable in our own skin. New you know, energy. And I know we talked about this on the phone. A lot of people will say, oh, you know, body image, it's okay. You should be happy with what you are. I'm not 100% into that because if you're a little overweight, and you're, you're probably healthy. not eating well and, and you're, you're probably not healthy. So, of course, we should be happy with our bodies and our body image. But if you're a little over, you know, it may not be so healthy. So maybe it's okay to say take a little weight off because it's, it's not so, healthy. And it's so amazing how quickly your body adjusts. You just have to give it a little time. I mean, six weeks, four weeks, six weeks, you see changes. I mean, we've been eating all our lives. So if you can give ourselves six weeks of discipline, you will see miracles happen to your body, and that's amazing on how our body reacts. We only have a couple minutes. Can I do a couple more minutes? Is that okay, Tony? One, One more minute. Okay. More minute. You give people supplements. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. So 
Uh, talk about that very briefly. Like, what do you do in terms of the supplements? The supplements are secondary. It's really what she's talking about is switching and switching because it's for most people, it has a level of addiction. And most people know anything about addiction, know that it's hard to keep nibbling at your addiction. It's easier to go cold turkey and then possibly when you've achieved your goals and you know what's going on to bring it back in moderation and in this case, prevent from gaining weight. So a lot of it is just getting people off the addiction and do it black and white. People can call you in, right? The name of your co the name of your company is Viking Health, isn't yeah. that correct? How yeah. can they get in touch with you in LA? And I know you Skype with people, you talk to people on the right. phone. You also have a background in psychology, so you know the psychology yeah. behind what I'm telling you. Fighting right. you, I will yeah, fight no, you for yeah, my no, Cheerios. I, I will fight you for my there Cheerios. There will be time when you can have it. But that's that's. But a you lot see what of, I mean? Yeah. You have to, and you know how to get under somebody and just say, yeah. "Here's adjust, why." Because people come in with different personalities and different motivations, so it just to help that person keep that alive and maybe see some other benefits with it. Yeah, but I like that you work with whole body and mind yeah. because you have to, otherwise you can't get through it. I mean, you, just watching you for the past year, you're like a, a, a soldier. I mean, you just won't stop. It's unbelievable. Well, actually, the number one takeaway that I had from the program is really the the skipping breakfast because I, <gasps> that's what really, Bingo. that's what really, was so fascinating to me and um, Dr. M was when he explained that tapping into our stored fat for fuel as opposed to using the food for fuel just makes so much sense to me. Absolutely. I'm not a big breakfast person and when I do have a breakfast I'm hungry the rest of the day. I want to keep going. And I, I thought, agree with I that. thought I could not live without milk in my coffee. I, I was such a latte girl and he's like you can do it and you can just put a little stevia in there and You'll be good to go. And that's my morning is like a cold, ice cold brew, little stevia, I'm good to go. And, and it's made such a huge, huge impactful difference. I appreciate you all coming in. A quick takeaway, doctor, before we go? Pleasure being here. No, a quick and takeaway. In other words, that somebody could say, okay, I'm going to do that. If somebody does one thing today, what should they do? Uh, try going without breakfast and, and see more how you water. feel. And know that when you're hungry, it's not a pain go past it because it will dissipate and then suddenly you're not hungry for a few hours and you know what your body could actually use a little bit of its stored fuel at that time and again lift that up again how many that's, pounds that's is that five pounds yeah oh. just try to lose that try to lose by that. a little more water try more water. to have less breakfast or no breakfast if possible yeah. imagine it here under your shirt i know as women we have it there and if you have breakfast don't have a bunch of processed carbs and sugar because you block your body's ability to use it's designed fuel source. I, I got to have you back on. Go ahead. I just think that uh, what is basic understanding on what fuel are we running on and how do we switch that fuel from sugar, glucose to fat and how we start using our own body fat as core sense of fuel and you just start melting it away. Mm. Yeah. And cortisol is another issue that we yeah. didn't even get into. Yeah. Stored fat in the stomach, All which is that, dangerous. Yeah. The visceral fat. The visceral fat. Ugh horrifying and that is something that you get later on in life right it's not you're not going to get I, that kind of fat when you're 20 I have years it. old oh you, i don't have we any always of it. have some organ fat <laughs> which is another word for visceral fat but as we put on weight and there's too much of it yes it starts affecting hormones everything it, it predisposes you for all the chronic diseases all right anybody five pounds or over i suggest calling dr christian middleton thank you so much with Pleasure. viking health jill Gunit. you're both beautiful you were beautiful before but there's no doubt you're healthier you're smiling you're both glowing thank you because you did something and you got to the other side so thank thanks you. for being here i really appreciate thank it you. thank Pleasure. you deborah yeah it was fun Pleasure. and uh, we'll see everybody next week and i'm gonna give you a call so Sounds um good. get me off my cheerio kick late in the, late at night okay <laughs> see everybody next week bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.